Um, I don't believe, that, and I know that is not the will of God for people to live in poverty. It is not the will of God for people to live in poverty, but it is not the will of God also for people to try to control you, neither. Now, um, another scripture I do want to bring. I do want to bring up that we have been talking. Let's talk about hell for a minute. And I'm not going to tell you something that Carter Pearson been saying. I'm not. I'm just saying that when we was teaching, when the church was teaching about hell, every time they saw the word hell in the King James Version Bible, they always reference it to being the lake of fire. Now, the Bible does talk about the lake of fire in Revelation. Jesus talks about it, about it in some of his parables. But when you look at other versions of the Bible, like the Amplified Version and the um, NIV, um, it shows you what actually what it actually is. Let me let me explain something. Um, and I'll, I will show you it. Um, let me open it up. Because I was reading this and it's bad for me because I always thought when I seen the word hell in the Bible that it was always talking about the lake of fire. And then I found out there is two different types of hell. There is one that is eternal fire. But there is also one that is referencing to the grave or to the place of the dead. Okay, so here I'm reading and I will turn this camera around. Okay, maybe you can't see that real good. Hell, a term that in common uses designate the place of future punishment for the wicked. Other meaning in many instances are expressions by this term. I'm reading through my own phone. Okay, so other meanings in many instances are expressed by this term, which must be recognized to prevent mistakes and confusion. In cases, in some cases, it refers to the grave and others to the place of disembodied spirits without any necessary implication as to their happiness or unhappiness. This fact, however, does not affect the correctness of the belief indicated by the common use of the term, a belief supported by many passages of scripture. So let's go to the scripture. Uh, scripture terms, the word of the original scripture rendered hell in English are three in number. There are, okay, so with a solitary exception of Second Peter 2 and 4, okay, they are the only words thus translated. These, this, or these, however, are not the only terms as we shall see in which the idea of a place of future penal suffering for the wicked is clearly and strongly expressed. The three words are as follow. Now, let me show you something, King James. I'm going to leave it right here. Let me turn this light off so it won't have the glare or nothing like that. Let's go to the King James Version right here. Let's go to one of the Old Testaments. Is, let me... Okay, hold on for a second. I'm just putting anything up there. Hold on for a second. Oh, boy. Let me find this. Okay. We don't go to hell. To the word hell, that is. Okay, so let's go to... This is a new... The King James Version is... Okay, King James Version said, Hell is naked before him, and destruction had no covering. Let's see what that will read in the Amplified Word Bible. Amplified Bible. That same scripture. Sheol. 
Let me see what it says. The place of the dead is naked before God. So let me read this. Let me turn this light back on so I can see. It says, Shell, without entering into the discussion as to the derivation of or the root word, the root meaning of this term. Okay, so without entering into the discussion as to the root meaning of this term in the Old Testament, it may be sufficient to say that it occurs several times in Scripture and the Old Testament Scripture. The general idea is the place of the dead, and by this it meant, it is meant, not the grave, but the place of those who have departed from this life. The term is thus used with reference to both the righteous and the wicked. So of the righteous, it gives some scriptures, uh, Psalm 16, 10, 30 and 3, um, Psalm 16, chapter 16, verse 10, and chapter 30, verse 3, and then Isaiah, um, chapter 38 and 10, and of the wicked in Numbers 16, 33, Job 24, 19, and Psalms 9, 17. Let's go to Isaiah. Okay, so let's look at Isaiah 10. Okay, so Isaiah 10 says, I, and um, it doesn't refer to it. Let's go back to the reference of hell. If I could tell you where it says hell at, it probably says Sheol in the Old Testament. Let's go to this scripture in Isaiah. Oops. Let's go to... Isaiah 14, now, um, let's see what it says. I want to start right here. It says, okay. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did have weakened the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation and the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Okay, so you see that word hell, right? So let's see what it says in the Amplified Bible. to King James. I want to make sure I start from the scripture that I start from. Oh, I messed up somewhere.
I can't even find it. Okay, let's see. Okay, it's, it's verse 12. So let's look at the Amplified Bible. Because I'll see here a couple of times in this passage. Okay, so Amplified Bible. Let's see what it reads. You have to forgive me. I'm going to start at the 11th verse. It says, Your pomp and magnificence have brought have been brought down to Sheol, and it says hell, in the King James Version, along with the music of your harps, maggots are spread out under you, and worms are your covering. Okay, now it talks, Now this is when it talks about Satan. Oh, okay, so how? It does say, oh. It says, how you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning. You see it says light bringer or light bearer. I'm sorry if you can't get a clear vision or clear it um, Okay. Son of the dawn, you have been cut down to the ground. You have weakened the nations, king of Babylon. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly in the remote part of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But in fact, you will be brought down to Sheol, to the remote recesses of the pit, the region of the dead. And I know a lot of people ain't gonna like this teaching today. Okay, so we find that in the Old Testament, and let me, I wanna find one more scripture because I know that in Isaiah said hell, hell has enlarged itself. So let, let's go, let me go and get this back to the King James Version. Okay, it is. You have to give me a minute because I don't know it right off the top of my head. Okay, so let's go to King. Let's go to Isaiah, the fifth chapter, and the 14th verse. And I have to turn this off so you can see very clear. This is the King James Version. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure in their glory, in their multitude, in their pomp. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. Now let's see what this says. In the Amplified Bible, I, I need to. We go on to the Amplified Bible. What does it say, though? I'm sorry, the 14th 14 verse. Therefore, Sheol, the realm of the dead, has increased its appetite to open its mouth beyond measure. to find one more before I go to the New Testament. Uh, yeah, give me a minute. I'm trying to find... One more scripture in the Old Testament. I thought it might have been in the Old Testament.
Okay, I can't find it right now, so um, I guess I'll find it later. And because I was trying to find where it says hell was created for the devil and his angels. Um, But anyway, so, let me turn this light back on. I can't find it right now. So we find these terms. Okay, now let's go to the New Testament. Okay, and we have two terms for hell. And one of them is Hades. And this is it. One of the New Testament terms render hell like the Old Testament shield. It is comprehensive. It has a quite similar significance. It refers to the underworld or region of the departed, the intermediate state between death and the resurrection. It occurs several times in the New Testament, namely in Matthew 11. So let's go. Let's, let's see what the King James Version say in Matthew 11 versus what it says in the Amplified Bible. Okay. So here's the King James Version, Matthew 11:23. And thou Capernaum, which are exalted unto the heavens, I'm sorry, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which has been done in thee has been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. What do the King James Version say? Let me just bring it up. Let's see what the King James Version say in this same chapter and 23rd verse. Or the Amplified Bible, rather. Amplified Bible. Let's see what it says. And I have to bring it up to the 23rd verse. And it reads, And you, Capernaum, are you to be exalted to heaven for your empathy and unresponsiveness? You will descend to Hades, the realm of the dead. For if the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Okay, so now, let me give you what it says about Hades right quick. And you know it's the underworld, it's the, it's the enemy of state between death and the resurrection. Okay, now, the King James Version renders this word hell in every case, with the exception of 1 Corinthians 15 and 55, and the King James Version only, where it gives grave, okay, at this point, okay, so the NIV usually renders death or grave for Hades. The distinction thus recognized between Hades and hell as a place of misery is a valid one. Nevertheless, it is equally plain that our Lord, certain of his words, associate judgment and suffering with the conditions of some of the inhabitants of Hades. Okay, so we know that Hades is the underworld or region of the departed. So Gehenna, Gehenna, I hope I'm saying it right, Gehenna, is, um, let me, let's talk about that. That is for the eternal fire. Okay. Let me see if you see this. Right here. You have Hades right here. You have Gehenna. Gehenna. Right there. Now it is the Valley of Hinnom. A place where. Now the Valley of Hinnom was a place where the Jewish apostasy and the rites of Moloch. Celebrated, okay. The, so they celebrated. They was uh, idols and all of that stuff, okay. And it was converted by King Josiah into a place of abomination where the dead bodies were thrown and burned. So that was Henna. Yes, the place served as a symbol, and the name was appropriated to designate the abode of lost spirits. And this way the term was used by the Lord. Okay, the word occurs in the New Testament and in every case 
It is properly translated hell, denoting the eternal state of the lost after resurrection. And I have a video to share about all these preachers talking about Jesus went to hell and the devil just thumped on him and it was on his neck and they was having a party all in hell and all of that stuff. Well, the devil is not in hell. He's on his earth. He's not in Gehenna. He's on his earth. He fell to the earth, him and a third of heaven. So it says a distinction between Hades and the intermediate Hades, which is the intermediate state, and Gehenna, the eternal fire, is fire of hell, is of importance not only because it is necessary to understanding of quite a large number of passages of in the New Testament but it may also prevent misconstruction and remove uncertainty as to Christ's teaching with regards to the future state of the wicked. So let's turn and look at a few scriptures. Okay, so in the New Testament, here's Matthew 5.29. Okay, so let's turn there. Make sure we're in the King James Version. Okay, it said, If thou right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body be cast into hell. Okay. So we see it right there. Now let's look at the Amplified. And we can look at the uh, NIV too. Amplified for that says, it says right here if your right eye makes you stumble and leads you to sin tear it out and throw it away that is remove yourself from the source of temptation in other words it ain't actually tell you to take, to cut off your physical limb, okay? They tell you to amputate yourself. It says right here, to remove yourself from the source of temptation, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into. So it does say the actual hell fire could hit him. So, Anytime the Amplified Bible. So you need to look at the Amplified Bible along with the King James Version. Let's look at the NIV right quick. And to see if it's referring to hell's fire or is it referring to the grave. Or, you know, to place where the dead, where both the righteous and the unrighteous go. This NIV Version. Let's see what it says. So the NIV version says, if your right eye causes you to stumble, gorge it out and throw it away, it is better for you to lose your one of your body than your whole body be thrown into hell. So it's all about hell's fire. It's all about Gehenna. Okay, let's look at Revelation. Okay, so let's look at Revelation 6 and 8. Let's see what it says. Okay, this is King James Version. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name sat that sat on the horse was death and hell, followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So let's see what the Amplified Bible says. So I looked and behold, and Ashton, 
a pale grayish, a pale greenish gray horse, like a corpse, representing death and pal and pestilence. And its rider name was Death, and Hades, the Ram of the Dead, was following with him. They were given authority and power over a fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with famine, you know, with hunger and with plague, pestilence, disease, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Uh, let's look at another scripture in Revelation. Okay, well, let's look at the 14th chapter of Revelations 20. Okay, here it go. 14th chapter. There's one more scripture. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay, so let's see what the Amplified Bible says. It says right here, then death and Hades, the ram of the dead, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of the fire, the eternal separation from God. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. So there you have it. So there it is. So Bishop Carter Pierce said his theory of, of no hill gospel or whatever it is called is is apostate. I'll tell you to go into your Bible and look at the different versions. There's different versions of the Bible. And people have added and taken away and you know simple we don't have the original manuals that they once had and that's probably because I don't understand. I know that we probably don't have the Old Testament original man from the original writers themselves. But I, I'm wondering why we don't have none from the original writers of the New Testament. Because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. And that's why you had the word shield. That meant, you know, that went the uh, underword, the, the, the place of the dead. And that's why it was written like that in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, the Bible was written in Greek by the original writers. And that's where the word Hades come from. Which means the place of the dead. And in the New, let me show you. In the NIV, it says basically the same thing right here. It says, then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. So I will share a video. I will share tonight about the man explaining more about hell and stuff. We do need to talk about homosexuality because I've seen something interesting.